Hi everyone, Stock Mo here. Today's video is for entertainment purposes only, and I am going to be interviewing Yuri Grunbaum. He is the CEO of Tip Ranks. I'm going to be asking him about the future of it, what got him there, all kinds of great questions. So if you want to see the background of how to start a huge millions of customers business, this is it. This is your chance. So stick around. I think you're going to like what I got for you. If you're new to the channel, I am Stock Mo. I'm an old financial advisor and educator. I taught high school and college level investing, finance, even crypto. But I, all I ever ask, hit that subscribe button, become part of the community, and of course, hit that bell down there, notifications all, and hit that thumb, that thumbs up thing, that, as the kids say, smash that like button, because it helps me with the algorithm. With all that being said now, I do have a couple links down there to help you out right now. I do have the link to Tip Ranks. I'm gonna be interviewing their CEO down there. You can check out that product, highly recommend it, and of course, I have the Weeble link down there to get two free stocks. Get paid for your time today. You put in 100 bucks, you get a, a, two free stocks worth up to $1,850. And of course, if you haven't checked out BlockFi right now, if you have any crypto at all, they will pay you up to $250 in free Bitcoin for getting into there. And on top of that, you get interest on top of the crypto you hold inside of there. So I highly recommend that. And of course, come over and join me at the Patreon. I have the link down there. I share you my portfolios. And of course, we have a private Discord with thousands of members where we talk about all things financial. Now, I'm going to get into the interview with them. Hope you enjoy it. I appreciate your time. So I'm happy to have our first ever CEO on the channel, Yuri Grunbaum. He is the CEO of Tip Ranks, and I'm happy to be able to have him on here and just talk about what the program is, how he got started, and a lot of other things. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into it with him and ask him some questions and see what we what we can find out about Tip Ranks, where it's going, where it's come from, and a lot of other interesting details. So Yuri, first of all, thank you very much uh, for joining us here at the channel. I greatly appreciate it. I know your time is valuable, and you know what else can I say? So the pleasure is mine, and I want to thank you for having me uh, over as well. I, uh, I, in a personal level, I love uh, uh, your channel, so it's great to actually be on it. Well, I appreciate that. I don't have Tessa Cat running around the studio today, but you know what? I'm sure somewhere out there he's thinking about stocks and everything else we're doing down here. You might even hear him meow once or twice in the interview. So you know, it's a Let's unique. I was going to say it's a unique channel. So we'll we'll get through this, and you'll have a. Uh, we'll see what happens. So first off, I know a lot of people want to know because I love Tip Ranks personally. I put it in my videos. Absolutely fantastic content over there. How did you get started? Because I always tell the students when I was teaching that every business has a background story. How do you get there? You know, usually there was an issue that had to be solved and there's an entrepreneur out there willing to get out there and do the dirty work to get it solved. So what's your story? So I'm a computer engineer. I studied uh, computers in university, and then uh, I worked as a software architect at a few companies. Uh, my main hobby was actually investing in the capital markets because everyone around me were always talking about it. And uh, at around uh, 2011, I found myself reading this article on three reasons you should invest in uh, Tata Motors, which is an Indian company that does a lot of things, uh, mostly uh, motors. And um, you know, I just went ahead and invested my yearly bonus on that stock. And uh, fast forward, you know, six months later, the stock is down 60%. And my wife is asking me, why do we have that in our portfolio? It always comes down to the wife asking yeah, why. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I did not have a good answer. So I told her that I, you know, I followed this uh, analyst and, you know, I had the impression that he knows a lot about the company because he seemed very knowledgeable in the article that I read. So I actually went back, I Googled the article, I found his name and then I created the spreadsheet. Uh, I'm an Excel geek. So I created the spreadsheet with all the historical uh, stocks that he recommended. And, you know, I started, you know, I went back then, it was on Google Finance and I started measuring how each one of them performed. And it took me a few hours just to realize that he was wrong most of the time. Even though we're talking about, you know, almost, uh, 2012 and we're after two years, three years of a bullish market. And still, you know, uh, he was able to be wrong most of the time. So that kind of uh, uh, created an idea of a financial accountability engine that automatically does all that for you. First, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go to Bloomberg and Thomson Reuters. I'm going to buy the data and just put the uh, numbers out there so everybody can see. But, you know, these guys didn't even get back to me. 
because they don't get back to individual investors. And I realized that I don't even know, nobody, retail investors do not know which analysts recommend which stocks. So we realized that there is a, a lot of value just by making that information available. And on top of that, we created the ranking system, which is completely data-driven. And now every time I uh, follow an advice of an analyst, I get a chance to evaluate his advice and see if you know it's just uh, nonsense or if it's something that or, you know, if it's based on someone that was actually able to outperform the S&P. Well, I don't, that leads me right into thinking about how I pick my stocks. I do a lot of fundamental uh, background research. How do you do it? Because, you know, you're the CEO, creator of Tip Ranks. What are you doing personally for your own personal portfolio? I'm guessing you're doing a lot of similar research, looking into the companies and stuff, but how do you utilize Tip Ranks on top of that? So... <clears throat> There are three ways uh, for me to evaluate stocks. And, and we can then talk on how do I get these ideas. But you know, the first thing, which is completely unrelated to tiferings, because I have this company, we have a lot of vendors and we're spending a lot of money on uh, cloud computing and, uh, and you know, internet and security and all that. I get to see a lot of uh, companies that uh, provide value to other companies. And if there are companies that I believe in the concept and I see that you know, we're getting a great service, and the ticket sizes are growing, but we're okay with that. I know that, you know, they're probably going to do good. So that's just, you know, an easy hack that I have. When it comes to tip ranks, what I usually do is I uh, search for the stocks that I'm interested in. Um, so, you know, let's say, uh, I don't know, uh, Palantir, which is very popular these days. And I will see who are the best analysts. And, you know, some of them are probably going to be bullish. Some of them are going to be bearish. I make sure to click on the read article to understand the reasoning behind their recommendations. So the first thing I do is to make sure that I get all the, you know, uh, upside and all the downside from the experts that are actually working 24 hours a day to research a company. The next thing I do, and this is, uh, this is something that I know I do very differently than others, is I look at corporate insider information because we know that there is a lot of alpha in insider activity, if you know how to use it. And so I will see if there are you know, uh, executives that have been selling a lot of equities in their companies in a proactive way, not as part of an employee stock option plan. And I will see if there are executives that have bought uh, shares in their company because these insiders actually believe that there is a lot of upside and, you know, if a CFO of a company buys shares in, uh, in his own company, he probably knows better about the business than any of us ever will. So that's another strong signal. So I'd say these are the three things that I use. We also have crowd wisdom. So it's always interesting to see what other investors uh, are like me and have been buying these companies and what other companies uh, they've been buying. And basically, this is the research that I do. Of course, I love reading more. You know, I need to understand the business. I want to see the earnings. I hope to see that it is actually growing. I hardly do technical analysis, even though I probably should do a bit. Uh, and then, you know, that's more or less the scope of the research for me. Yeah, yeah, I, I get you on that. The, I like to look into the fundamentals. And of course, I think there is a healthy balance between technical and fundamental. But it, it's interesting with the whole crowd. When you mentioned the crowd, is that where all the investors like me out there were a part of tip ranks or do you, you know, you can see what we're all buying and it kind of puts it together or yeah. how does, how's that information come in? Cause I'm so interrupting actually, that. So one of our most popular tools is called the, our smart portfolio and it allows you to sync your existing portfolio to tip ranks or to create a manual portfolio. And then it basically shows you how do you perform compared to I believe we've got about 700,000 uh, investors on our platform. So you can see how you rank compared to them month over month. You can also follow the top performing ones, assuming that they enable the feature to make their portfolio public. So you can, so that's one way to use it. You can simply follow top performing investors on our platform and it's completely uh, objective. And it is, uh, you know, we're not paying them. They're not paying us. It's simply data driven uh, insights. The other thing that we do is many times there are interesting exotic stocks, right? Like let's say penny stocks or interesting biotech stocks that are about to shoot up and all that. What we do is we provide this crowd wisdom tool. So, you know, you're interested in a stock that nobody heard of probably. You can go to Temperance and you can see how many investors in percentage on Temperance actually own this company and how much do they actually allocate. Because as you probably know, one of the most important elements in investing is diversification. It's not just doing stock picking, it's making sure that you choose the right sector and you have a healthy balance. 
Uh, so what we do there is I, you know, first of all, I try to understand the, the social trend. Are there more investors buying it or selling it? But I also want to see these investors, what other companies do they have in their portfolio? Because that generates a lot of interesting ideas. Yeah, I always if wonder. Uh, yeah, it does. Because I know a lot of, there's been a lot of talk about the growth of just YouTube, social media affecting retail investors. And it's really grown over the last year or two. And now I'm hearing that a lot of investing corporations out there want to hear what us YouTubers, Retail. yeah, we want to, they want to yeah. know because they want to use that as another variable in their calculations of what to do with stocks. I don't know if I want to take that as a good thing or a bad thing, but it's it an is amazing gonna... thing. And I'll tell you why, you know, we've been working with, we have a lot of uh, institutional investors that are using our products. And, you know, when we speak with every company, every list of companies has an investor relation arm, right? And, you know, their job is basically to create liquidity for the stock. So they will go to the funds and try to convince them, try to, you know, to, to create meetings with management just to have them as the long-term investors. What happened in 2020 is that the trading volumes generated from retail investors went up from 10% to 25%. And suddenly retail investors are impacting the market more than discretionary funds. Of course, you have the algo tradings and all that, and that's the majority of the trading volumes. But now if you want to create liquidity on your company, you don't need to start calling all the citadels of the world. You need to be on social media. You need to be in front of the main street. And that is a great way. I mean, that's great for all of us investors because you have so much power now. And companies need to convince you that they're a good uh, company to buy. They don't just need to go and convince Warren Buffett. And that's a big deal. Yeah, that's a very interesting. Uh, let me see here. I, I would guess when you started your business, and I'm always, this is more of my question here. What was some of the, because when we start this channel, I'm sure a lot of people out there have their own businesses. There's always some pitfalls you run through. You are now worldwide. You know, every, we all know you over here. You're based in Israel in case people don't know that. What were some of the challenges that you had in growing to the point that we know you around the world? So, you know, it's, uh, it's funny because uh, we're talking about challenges that we have. We always have challenges. We still have a lot of challenges and I don't expect to have any less in a year. I mean, look, it's challenging to growing in this competitive environment where you need to convince uh, the average uh, user that he will get tremendous value from your service. But if we go back to the beginning, the first challenge is how do we get the data and why does nobody else have that data? And that actually, that's pretty interesting. Many times a challenge is a great way to create an entry barrier to your niche. And so we, we spent millions on developing uh, 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 an NLP, a natural language processing engine that knows how to read articles from different websites to collect the information. And that's how we started. So it took us a long time to actually get to the first uh, product that we rolled out, which was, by the way, it was a disaster and we then made a pivot, but we can talk about that as well. But that was the first challenge, getting the data. Um, then what happened is actually pretty interesting. Two years later, we raised capital. And in that round, we had Elliot Spitzer who uh, joined us. And as you, you know, we all remember, he was the attorney general of New York and he worked yes. very closely on bringing transparency uh, by dividing the analyst from the investment banking, from, sorry, from the buy side. And when he joined, we started getting a lot of media coverage. We were all over the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times and you know, all these. And suddenly we went from a point where we need to chase analysts to get them on our system to a point where they're chasing us because they want to be on our system because some of them are actually pretty good and they will use it for marketing materials, but mostly they don't want to be out like it's important for them. So, you know, the first uh, inquiries that we used to get from analysts is, hey, can you change our picture? Uh, but then it suddenly became, hey, you know what, we're also covering this sector and we have this new analyst that is joining and so, you know, that is one problem, a very big problem that, you know, created a big question on our business that we solved. Then you have, you know, then you meet the market uh, and you have a product outside and that's where problems really begin because you realize that there is no product market fit. And suddenly you need to do a lot of iterations to improve the product, to make sure that people are coming back to your website all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's a long process. Like we're uh, in three weeks, we will be celebrating nine years and we're wow. still passionate on improving the product. Well, say in nine years now, you've grown from zero all the way up to how many users do you have now actively, we'll say monthly or 
whatever number you'd like to throw so out there. We, we, we get anywhere from three to four million unique users a month on our platform. And uh, users who use our mobile app will visit it about 15 times a day. Uh, so, you know, the engagement is off the charts. Uh, but, you know, uh, it's still small. We still want to be 20 times bigger, and we're working very hard to make that happen. So we raised capital, and we have a lot of plans to democratize. Uh, I know it's a cliche, but we're really trying to democratize Wall Street. We want to be sure that, you know, unique data sets that you will be getting on expensive terminals for institutions would be available for free for retail investors. And we raised a lot of capital just to make that happen. So we can buy the products and just make them available. Yeah, that's fantastic. You know, speaking of growing, I am personally looking into the crypto industry. I, I use your product almost daily for my videos when I talk about the different analysts because I was using the analysts. I was doing the old school you out there looking up analysts, seeing what they think, doing my homework, comparing it to their homework and seeing how close am I to the pros out there, if you will. And then I found your product and I was like, hey, this is awesome. This is everything in one place. But then the one thing I also do, though, is the crypto industry. And I notice you do not have that yet. And it's really right. starting to pick up now with retail investors. I think I've noticed it personally over the last three months. It has exploded. And right. I'm part of that. I used to teach it in high school. I taught uh, cryptocurrency, how to mine, how to invest. But I think the retail investor would need a product that would do very similar to what you're doing now with the analysts and the financial for stocks. But there really isn't, this would be groundbreaking because there really isn't like analysts out there in Wall Street talking about crypto. There's just, I would say, self-claimed right. experts on YouTube, social media, and they are experts, but they're not the Wall Street, Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. So do you have anything you're looking into in the crypto space? Because I think that would just... Uh, I think it would be awesome. Yeah, 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 I know. So that, that's a trend that we uh, missed. And not only have we missed it once, we missed it twice. Because in, uh, because in 2018, if you remember, crypto really became mainstream. Suddenly, every second article on CNBC was Bitcoin and Bitcoin and Bitcoin. And if I remember correctly, it, uh, you know, it went up to $20,000 at uh, around November, December 2018. And, you know, we were like, okay. Let's throw everything. We want to launch a crypto website. That's what our users are asking us for. And so we bought this expensive domain called CoinWatch. And we started thinking, okay, so what do we, uh, what do, we do? What unique information can we bring that they can't find, for instance, on CoinMarketCap, right? Because, you know, nobody's going to come to us just to see the price of Bitcoin. Uh, we need to bring unique data sets. So we created this tool that analyzes social media and that analyzes new sentiments. And we thought, okay, maybe this can be the fundamentals for crypto because, I mean, there are no earnings, uh, there are no insider transactions, it's a distributed system and there, there's no, you know, it, it, so it's very hard to bring alternative data to that space. Uh, so we went up with uh, CoinWatch, but, you know, by the time it was ready, which was early 2019, there was no more market. It crashed and nobody cared about crypto anymore. And about half a year uh, ago, we, uh, we decided to just uh, shut it down. Like, we, you know, the sun set it. Like, we didn't want to maintain it. It required some R&D. And then everything exploded again. And we decided that this time we're going to do it right and going to do it on our website. So we will soon start uh, rolling out some crypto pages. But it's going to take time. Like, you don't build a good product in a few months. But you start with something, and then you get some feedback, and you improve it. But we're definitely not going to miss this again. No, that, I remember that back in 2018. I think Bitcoin dropped 87% uh, from the high. Ethereum yeah. down 94%. No one wanted to touch it. I remember I shut down my miners, kind of walked away from it. And then I had some and I just kind of came back here and I was like, wow, I still have some and it turned into something. I think this yeah. time's different though, because I do believe that you're going to see Wall Street pulling out ETS for that. And I it, and when the United They're States- ETFs yeah. for that. Yeah. Well, for the Canada, uh, legalized it up there. Down here in the United States, uh, I think Van Eck just put in for ETFs. They have not been okayed by the SEC yet in the United States, but if they do, and they'll be backed by the actual crypto, you know, holding, you know, they'll go out and buy that. I think that would be fantastic and huge, and I think it would grow the industry for crypto in general. Plus, anybody who, who's out there who has already got a head start on this would definitely benefit because I think that would make up over, from what I read from a lot of the news, over 50% of, of uh, the ETF power in the crypto space could be here in the United States. So I think there's some opportunity there. 
I completely agree. And, you know, that goes back to uh, what we talked before about the retail investors, the fact that retail investors have. So so the reason in 2018, uh, crypto did not, uh, you know, uh, blow up at the end of uh, at the end of the year and did not become a, a, a standard is because in financial institutions did not endorse it. They were very much against it. Yeah. And, you know, now it doesn't matter what financial institutions do anyway, because the power is with retail investors. And the fact that you have companies like Coinbase or uh, eToro or uh, some of the other names that, you know, Robinhood that make everything accessible and easy. I think that's what's going to determine the future of uh, the crypto. I agree. You know, it's funny because I remember back and then so many of the big wigs, I remember just... Uh, Warren Buffett was somebody I always liked to read and follow, and he was so against it. And then we moved, you know, a lot of CEOs were, I'm talking big, you know, power people out there, just not for it. And then I, I read some of the articles recently, even today I was reading before I was talking to you that some of the CEOs out there and big wigs who are against it. And I mean, they were vocal and they were asked, do you own some Bitcoin? They're like, yeah, I, I have a, a part of my portfolio in it. And so it's becoming like, even if they badmouth it, they still own it. Yeah, you know? they have a conflict of interest. Yeah. Like, you know, they can't endorse it in public, but they obviously own something. It's exactly it right there. They're not there. They might be against it in public, but they're buying. And I think yeah. that's the change that we're not seeing from 2018. And I think the opportunities for a handful, I don't think they're all going to be good, but that's the question. A lot of people, I think there's over 5,000 different cryptos. You got your you got your work ahead of you here, but but you know. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, I know. We're building a we're building a group just around that. So. Yeah, and that um, and I don't think that's going to go anywhere. I think it's going to continue, and I do believe personally that eventually a lot of them will end at zero, but a handful uh, are going to be game changers for the industry, and those who are part of that will benefit. So that's what I I think would happen with tip ranks. I can I can tell you a lot of my people ask me about that. Uh, if there's someone out there who will put all that information in one place, because that is a wild, wild west situation with all that information in crypto. It is hard right. to understand the updates for each blockchain, and we just need a place to go. And that's my personal uh, hope that you can bring that together. And just like information, I can go to one place and it's all there, uh, you know, and maybe some analysts out there or social media gurus that you can put in one place. And that would be yeah, 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 yeah. no no so uh it's completely on our roadmap it's it's going to happen it's going to take time to do it perfectly like everything uh, good but yeah. uh we're going to start a rollout pretty soon uh, as the basic pages and on top of that release more and more unique data sets that we believe can bring can give you an edge that's awesome so is there i always the other thing i always wonder is how many countries are you actually got customers from you know how big is tip ranks so, I mean, we have customers from all around the world, right? But our main market, I'd say, is the U.S. About 70% of our users okay. come from the United States. And, you know, that's the most interesting market in the world. So it, it, it makes sense that, you know, let's start with which markets do we cover? We, we started with U.S. only a year and a half ago. We made uh, the Canadian market, TSX, available on Tiffrings as well. And that was an amazing experience because before we knew it, we had agreements with TD Bank in Canada and uh, uh, the, the, the stock exchange itself, who has been uh, simply putting our data inside their platforms. Um, and then we rolled out UK and this year we plan to roll out some more markets. But the thing is that regardless to where you are around the world, you know, and then the stocks that you have listed in your local exchanges, you're still going to think about Apple, Amazon, and Tesla, yeah. right? So it's still the most interesting market. Even, you know, we live in Israel and we have a nice uh, local stock exchange, but, you know, people here aren't talking about our local companies, are talking about the ones in the U.S. And, you know, the, the big startups that get out of Israel, which is a very innovative country, they all list automatically on, on the U.S. exchanges. So we have a lot of users from around the world, but U.S. is our biggest market. Then we have Canada. Then, you know, it goes down from U.K., Germany, uh, Holland, and a few other countries. Well, I appreciate it. Now, I do have a question. I have my favorite stocks. Of course, I love my Tesla stock. I have NEO and a few other EV and clean energy stocks. Is there anything personally that you would, that what, what's your go-to stock that you're looking at right now that you like in your portfolio, you feel good about, or you just think you're going to make a lot of money out there? So, you know, it's an interesting question because you have stocks that you believe in, but you know that they're not going to do the 500% that we've used right. to see in 2020, but you still believe in the long-term vision. And I have a lot of uh, a lot of different stocks on my portfolio, but my favorite one, not in terms of the performance, but in right. terms of believing in the business would be Disney. I think that, I think that the move 
that they've done about a year and a half ago with releasing Disney Plus was spot on. And the fact that, you know, a pandemic, which could easily kill a business like them, created such an amazing opportunity to release a streaming video with the best content. I mean, it's, it's undisputable the fact that Disney has the best content. All of us, you know, love Star Wars and all the other big things that they have there. And, you know, I know that Amazon is getting big into this space now with MGM. I mean, we see a lot of big players merging and, you know, and all that. But I, I still believe that Disney is going to win this and they're probably going to do better than Netflix. And, you know, they're currently not priced, in my opinion, they're not priced accordingly. Like they have very different multiples than Netflix, even though they're on the same spot with better content. And, and also, you know, they just started, I mean, they released it in a few countries, but they're not global yet. For instance, in Israel, you can't buy Disney Plus. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, I think Disney is a fantastic stock. It's actually one of my bigger holdings in my portfolio. And really? we go down to Disney. I take the kids down to Disney World a couple times a, a year. My wife is a big Disney head. So if, when she sees this video, which she'll be watching, I'm sure she'll be excited about it. Uh, yeah, she'll probably have me buying more Disney stock because of this. So <laughs> thanks a lot. All right. So I, I didn't know if there's anything else you wanted to share with everyone out there. I At this point, you answered all my questions. I greatly appreciate it. It. Is it, uh, any final words? No, I just, uh, you know, I want to thank individuals uh, like yourself that, uh, you know, decided to dedicate their time to help other investors, to educate them and, you know, to share your knowledge. This is awesome. This is, I think, you know, a beginning of a revolution that we're, you know, we're seeing with the individual investors, uh, you know, taking more power. Well, I agree. I think the, the world's changing, the, the advent of the internet and just these different ways of getting information out, including tip ranks helping with that, will give the retail investors a, a leg up, if you will, compared to the old days where you opened up the Wall Street Journal. And that's pretty that's much all you had. had. Yeah, you know, yeah. you didn't know what the, you didn't have the money to get the analysts. Now you can just go in one place, see it all and still read the Wall Street Journal. So I like doing right. that too. So, well, I appreciate it, Yuri. Every time, you know, I hopefully I'll have you back on the channel again and we can continue this conversation once you get that crypto up and running and we can see what's gone and talk a little bit more about some stocks. So I appreciate Sounds your time, good. Yuri, and look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Uh, likewise. Uh,